about the segmentation of private cloud, hybrid cloud, and then obviously the, the, the hmm. other cases like Facebook and standalone. Right. Um, what's the What's the level of support do they need? The second question is, what level of support do the customers need in this private cloud conversation and then the hybrid cloud? Do they differ? So first is, you know, um, go ahead. Well, no, I mean, uh, I think, you know, in the cloud space, support will be very different when people are accustomed to. It's all about keeping up running applications, keeping up running businesses because with the virtualization and, and, and the move of critical business process to the cloud, it's not about keeping infrastructure up and running, it's about keeping the cloud, the cloud, the cloud up and running. So it, it really it brings in you know, an interest set of challenges from the mentality standpoint, what means you know, uptime in the cloud space. Very different than keeping a server up and running. So that's why you know HP is a very well positioned in this market because we have the expertise around the converged infrastructure, we have the expertise around the cloud, and now with the new service offering, we're going to you know target the cloud with predictive analytics and, and make sure we have the capabilities we need to support customers for business outcome, not just to keep technology running. So that's one aspect of the cloud. And by the way, the other thing we do is, um, you know, in, this, in the technology services space, we have a huge practice around cloud consulting. So what we help our customers is transform their environment to be cloud ready, whether it's, you know, a hybrid model to the private cloud or potentially through the public cloud. So we also help design those environments with support in mind and what that means. What's changing in terms of how customers contact you? You mentioned in your keynote, you said you know yep. it changes the IVR experience. I mean, are you using? I mean, obviously using things like chat and maybe even email, smoke signals. Well, what's what's yeah. changing there? Well, I mean, it's changing a lot. You know, enterprise customers don't really like to place calls. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the times, you know, they're going to do their own diagnostics. That's why you know this this innovation with Raven Gen Eight it, it allows us to extend those diagnostics to the customer. So. When they open a ticket, which is, by the way, through the HP in, inside online and through our HP support portal, all that automation takes place, which means customers are getting used to open a ticket through an email, whether it's a portal or a notification on an email, instead of placing a call. And it, you know, social media is going to play a key role too going forward, right? Because the mobility aspects of this are already playing a huge role. So customers are more and more into driving, you know, the service automation, not just picking the phone and calling. Is chat, is chat a big part of how you guys support? Chat definitely in the support, in the consumer space is a big aspect. Uh, but we, we use chat in enterprise space in a unique way, in a personalized way, because ultimately we have personalized customer support portals for enterprises, and they have the ability to chat with our experts. They do? They do, Okay, Absolutely. so so I know when I'm chatting, when, when I'm chatting with my consumer provider, I know he he or she is servicing three or four others. You, you do the this same kind of... This one is servicing, you know, <laughs> and again, through the HP Proactive Services we introduced today, is the single yeah. point of contact. This is a serious question, right? Yeah, so you're absolutely. saying that when I'm chatting with you, right. I'm ch you the, the person on the other end of the chat is only chatting with well, me, he's exactly. not, or she's not multitasking. Exactly, right? exactly, because our goal is not to do multitasking, but to solve customer problem as fast as possible. Yeah. Okay. And Teddy, I have a question for you around the services landscape. Again, I want to kind of go back to the market because uh, there's a lot of definitions that are changing. Um, and how do you, what's your agenda for the next year or next two years around services um, from your internal perspective? And then what do you see happening in the marketplace that's critical? Because there's the old school, big SAP deployments, which right. has a lot of gear and there's some applications on top, and you, you guys talk about dynamic uh, workloads in here uh, that Jenny talks about, and then you have internally to, to service that. What's happening in the marketplace? Right. Um, and what's the top three things or four things that's happening that are really game changing? Well, first of all, my, my, my passion is around, you know, uh, designing and uh, delivering uh, leading experiences. So when you ask me what is my first priority is all around that, really designing and deploying leading customer experiences. And um, so that's point number one. When I look at the market today, right, the complexity that uh, this environment infrastructure space in the converged infrastructure of the cloud is bringing in is really understanding the customer needs. And again, it's all around availability of business outcomes and processes so that we can 
not only meet but exceed those customer expectations. And so a lot of innovation around you know agility and predictive analytics is going to be a key important aspect of what we do going forward because ultimately it's all about preventing issues before they happen. How about the channel? Obviously the channel, you guys yeah. have a big story here. We've heard yeah. some storage guys have a great announcement with the... Well, we have two today. Two big major announcements, right? So one is the storage yeah. component. The other one is the package, consulting package services. So we are extending to our channel partners uh, some of the great you know, capabilities we have in the consulting space and, and package it in a way so they can sell it on our behalf. So that means you know, channel partners now can leverage our consulting teams to help drive the transformation for the clients. And that's enabling what, a new breed of solution providers? Correct. Well, it's, it's, it's basically enabling customers, uh, channel partners, to help drive the transformation with their customers in the IT space. So, for example, you know, data transformation services, storage consultative services, networking consultative services. Not all channels partners have all the capabilities, so we make those available for the partners who want to have HP help them drive that transformation, and, and is, is deployed in a way that's easy to sell easy to on and easy to and even service from HP so exactly. you don't need to have exactly. you guys can pass through your services to through your reseller or your indirect exactly. channel and the customer has a great experience exactly and the other thing is that you know as a part of the service one right we have what we call the HP branded partner solves which means you know channel partners can still sell HP services and they can deliver on our behalf so it's a true complementary win-win uh, for our children. With their own brand. With their own brand, exactly. Um, I have a, a question about your organization. Last summer, um, mm -hmm. uh, HP made a change uh, and uh, took some of the support services and aligned them with the products. Uh, Correct. Why was that uh, change made and what was what has been the impact? Well, what we did last year, right, under the leadership of Dana Natelli, is bring together the um, enterprise server and storage networking group with technology services and is again at the core of our strategy, which is all around the converged infrastructure and the cloud as we move forward. So what that allows us is simply, you know, provide the entire solution to our customers, but most important, align two organizations to collaborate better together. And I think, you know, the introduction of what you see today at Genate is an example of that, where we jointly innovate leading experiences and we also help our partners in the, in the business units, in the hardware business units, really drive product quality and serviceability to the next level because now we have a much tighter closed loop feedback process, which means you know, we can provide real-time information and tools like HP Inside the Line provides that information in, in a very accurate way. So that's interesting because we were on stage with Mark Potter and he talked about thank you for partnering with yep. me. So it's more than just optics for No, a, this a is a real true collaboration and we hold our people accountable and that's what, how we measure our people. So the example of the collaboration that Mark was talking about during the inception and design of the Gen 8, we actually brought in technicians from our all over the world in the technology services and basically they were part of the design feedback process so for example the smart socket and some of the other design like smart drive were all ideas that came from the field real-time examples of what people go through and in terms of challenges and the engineers so this is built from the ground up built from the ground up and that's the message of the gen 8 architecture built from the ground up for the next generation. For deployment, for all the performance benefits, but exactly. really the serviceability piece isn't just setting out a service tech to repair hardware anymore. Right. It's a complex equation of indirect channel, channel. provider, exactly. all the business models behind it. So like Gen 8, an integrated solution, you've done that on the business model side. Exactly, and that's why we also couple with our own innovation on the services side because ultimately we build the analytics by leveraging the technology and the products and provide, you know, specific actions to specific um, you know, uh, status that the machine may tell us. Okay, my final question, mm -hmm. then we can talk about you know, travel in the world, you know, <laughs> the three languages you have, uh, is really twofold. Everyone always wants to know what's in it for me, right? The customers, so what's in it for me? I'm the customer, what's in it for me? Yeah. Hey, services, yeah. what's in it for me? Yeah. Dealer, so, dealer, indirect channel, what's in it for me? Right. So two, well, two points. So, I mean, for the customer, yeah. you know, true benefits are support time, savings up to 90%, which means you know they can they eliminate a lot of the manual processes, 
you know, no need to have spreadsheets tracking assets, you know, tracking, you know, warranty administration, contracts, where they are. So I just call HP app, hand over my problems, yeah. you solve Exa that. Exactly, because it's all aggregated in this cloud-based IT solution. The other thing is that you can access service event and you can understand what are the root causes of your infrastructure. And then, you know, from the time to resolution, we are able to increase that time to resolution by 66%. And then last but not least, if they are using their own technicians, because of the telemetry built in the product, they can improve the first time fix, which ultimately, you know, turns into uptime and availability. From the channel partner perspective, because this is extent, extended to the channel partners, in fact, in HP Inside Online, there is a dedicated section to our channel partners. We call it My Customer. It's a specific tab. What that means is that a Service One authorized partner, they can go there and see the customer environment and also do the analytics because we provide extensive reporting, which means business development people so in the service a dashboard. Part, a, a dashboard, exactly. That the and customer doesn't see? They see. Which they, the customer doesn't see because it's an aggregated personalized yes, view, yep. but the customer has to opt in. Yes. Okay. Um, but then with all those analytics, c the channel partners can look for value capture opportunities and upsell opportunities to meet and exceed the customer expectations. So those analytics are, um, I mean, they must be exploding in terms of the amount of data that you're capturing. And so it's- Well, like I said, we're capturing 1,500 very unique parameters in the active healthcare, uh, ac uh, active health system, and they are provided in a way that they are reported for for taking actions real time. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, now you're going to collect more data. You're going to have time series and exactly set improvements. And exactly. And then you know what you want to focus is what is uh, you know um, maintaining the infrastructure up to t uh, up to date. So that's why you know channel partners and HP experts. Uh, will have the ability to see what the latest, uh, you know, firmwares and BIOS are, and therefore, you know, they can maintain that infrastructure up to date, almost real time. And by the way, some of those updates are not disruptive, which means, you know, you don't need to bring the environment down. Okay, final question before we break, because we have to get, we're getting the break sign. Uh, next five years, five years from now, what's going to be different about the services world? Is it going to be fully integrated? Absolutely, it, it is going to be, fully integrated at the core is going to be more services oriented than has been has been so far. In fact, customers are going to look more at services uh, than, you know, just product and technology. So what do you call that? Service company. as a service? Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, I, 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 SaaS? Yes. Yeah, you know, it's all about agility yeah. at the end of the day, right? <laughs> so it is all par part of the experience they're looking for. I mean, and the fact, you know, many customers are going to move at different pace as we go there. But services, predictive analytics, agility are going to be at the core in the next five to 10 years. Antonio Neri, Senior Vice President of General Mouse Technology Services, thanks for coming inside theCUBE, sharing with us your perspective about services. Obviously, that's a topic that's not on the top of mind of all the big out there in the press, but it's a real big market. It's a money maker, and that's where the meat and potatoes gets done in terms of the business side of it, and it's really, really important being integrated. Congratulations on your well, announcement. Thank you thank very you much. Thank you for having me here today. Okay, yeah, great thank you very much. Thank you.